I think business can be fun. I think uh -huh. business is built on consistency. I think business is built on building great relationships. If you have weaknesses somewhere, you work with someone that has strengths where you're weak at, you know? Mm -hmm. You can do a lot by yourself, but it's better if you work with other people to go further. I've definitely learned that. And it's a lot of money out there for everyone. So welcome to Vegas Circle Podcast with your hosts, Paki and Chris. We are people who are passionate about business, success, and culture. And this is our platform to showcase the people in our city who made it happen. On today's podcast, this is special for us, man. Yeah. We bring in Mr. Jeff Porter back. We literally had him on five years ago, episode one in a barbershop. Yeah, 2018. This man actually gave us the opportunity to, to literally give him a two, two and a half hour <laughs> interview when he was running Porter Pictures. But now he's actually the founder of uh, Porter Craig Film and Media. We got Mr. Jeff Porter. So welcome back to the circle, brother. Welcome, Thank you, welcome. guys. Thank you, gentlemen. So this is yeah, special. Man. I, I, I got to give you a pound, yeah, man. No, you, you guys are well. special for us, man. For, you guys for real. Well. I know how hard it is uh, to stay consistent for that long of time. So yeah. yeah. Five years, though. It's been it's been no joke, man. And we've been following what you've been doing every so often. Me and you check in just to see see what you've been doing. But um, let's talk. Let's jump right in, man. So new partnership. Yes. Porter and Craig. Last time we were able to talk about, you know, for our listeners, what you did with Porter Pictures, I think since 20, 2012, I think mm -hmm. is when you launched that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the new partnership. Just how'd you guys come together with, with you know, with this brand and, and uh, big company? So, as you know, I, I had Porter Pictures for some time now. Yep. And um, within Porter Pictures during COVID, you know, a lot of things in the industry changed quite a bit. Yeah. And so I was happy and very complacent, I should say, in regards of representing content, taking content, and then selling it to the distribution companies yeah. or the studios, the outlets, et cetera. Um, during COVID, the market changed. Mm -hmm. So less films were created. The distributors were a bit different. Some came and went. Um, and I found myself in an interesting place, you know, a place that I didn't like being in because I didn't control the content and, you know, yep. I was just kind of stuck in the middle during COVID. And yep. so during that time, a lot of our clients that we were working with were like, hey, we'll prefer to you being the distributor. You know, mm -hmm. why aren't you the distributor? Yep. You know, and um, it wasn't much between what I was doing prior to um, to being the distributor, you know, and, and more so responsibility purposes. Got it. Um, and it was a good question. You know, it was just a little bit more work. And it was like, okay, hey, do I want to take that more work on? But at that time, it was worth it. And yeah. so time and time had went. A few people had come and constantly said, hey, you should do this. Yeah. And then a colleague of mine introduced um, a gentleman named Keith to me, mm. um, who's my partner now, Keith L. Craig. And Keith at the time had been, he'd been he'd working with Disney. And it's very rare, as you understand, for a person in the studio to kind of like want to leave the studio yeah. or be interested. Yeah. But at that time, I think he was just putting fillers in because he believed he reached a kind of a plateau. You know, Disney... Um, I think he'd been there for seven years, you know, we're constantly just breaking their own records in regards to the box office successes, you know, um, sure. with the Avengers and Black Panther and Coco. And it just seemed like they just kept hitting milestones. Mm -hmm. And so after so many years, he was saying, hey, you know, I'm not going anywhere else. Yeah. You know, it's kind of yeah. like I'm just doing my job and I want to do more. I feel like I have more to bring. You know, he has an extensive background. So. We talked and we had many back and forth conversations, you know, um, it wasn't something that just, you know, we instantly did. It was one of those, you know, um, and then one long night, we had a long few hour conversation and we decided to just go ahead and make it happen and build Porter Craig mm -hmm. um, and just kind of move how we were moving mm -hmm. and been a blessing ever since, man. Oh, you know, we've been it. together and yeah. I think there's probably hasn't a day went by I haven't talked to Keith. <laughs> That's, That's awesome. exciting. Yeah. You know, you're talking about the distributor and just kind of, you know, it's a little step back to kind of understand a little bit different. I know that changes of course happened during COVID and even now with just the way digital media is playing its part and kind of getting content in front of people when you're trying to distribute it now how is that different or you know what kind of benchmarks or you know processes do you have to implement to kind of create those distribution channels to make it easier to kind of flow that content through you and distribute it out to the where people can see it at I think that's kind of uh, where we start shining more as well, because mm -hmm. as you understand, there's a big fight going on between some of the major platforms, the Netflixes, mm -hmm. the HBO Maxes, yep. the Hulus, um, you know, and these are all studio based companies mm -hmm. who've built, you know, amazing, huge catalogs. But the problem is you have so many of them now, yeah. you know, and people are being gouged with subscription fees left and right. You know, I mean, yes, <laughs> the average person is probably paying four to five different subscription fees, yeah. you know, and so they're having their own internal fight. Right. In mm -hmm. regards of who's going to, you know, take over the most content, who can do what, what companies and the person that were taking the losses was filmmakers, 
because their films were being stuck in different places. They were being moved to different mm -hmm. places. They don't, there's no consistency of knowing, okay, how we see success. And the companies are more worried about their catalogs, curating things yeah. and building their own companies. And so that's kind of where we came in. Like, hey, we understand the market. We understand that this company is not going down. This company is paying. We understand this company is doing this. Mm -hmm. And so it just made us more essential. Like, hey, we can actually take and harness and, and, and take you all the way through the process of each platform to knowing, you know, where our sales are going to come from, mm -hmm. where people are still, you know, um, consuming content at. And then, you know, strategically putting out each each film in a strategic way to different platforms to to best maximize our um our profits that based on sense. the consumers. So mm -hmm. for example, um, if we know, Hey, you watch everything on Amazon, you know, certain people just Amazon crazy. Hey, I don't go anywhere else. All my yeah. movies, on Amazon, I have an Amazon prime account. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure certain content is for those people. There's certain people that just watch Tubi. Hey, you know, yeah, I watch yeah, nothing yeah. but Tubi movies all day. So mm -hmm. we want to make sure we have content there directly for that personnel as well. There's certain people that are still on Cox Cable or Comcast or Spectrum mm -hmm. and they consume their content that way. So we want to make sure certain content are for those consumers as well. So the goal was just making sure that we had content for the available platforms to reach the right consumers. How do you like navigate building those partnerships with those channels? Because like you said, there is so many of them now, yeah, right? Yeah, and, yeah. You know, say I have personally <coughs> a, a picture that I want to get out and I, I come and, you know, talk to you about distribution and you have to make that choice, right? And do you have individual partnerships with each of these companies or know exactly where to go? Or is there like a, a standard process that you have to navigate through to get to them, put it on the channel? No, in the very beginning, that's what we did. So we went out um, and we built those relationships and built those agreements gotcha. with each platform. So therefore we can directly distribute to each platform. That makes sense. We can strategically coordinate with our Comcast, with our Tubis, with our Amazons, mm -hmm. you know, with our Spectrums, um, so on and so forth. Mm. That way we can make sure that, you know, we can day and date our content correctly. You know, we can get paid directly from our content. So we're not having to go through third party sources and deal with so many other middle people. Oh, perfect. Yeah, yeah that makes a lot yeah. of sense. Yeah. yeah. A little What's... bit longer of a process, but yeah, it's <laughs> makes sense. What are you seeing happen now? So like, obviously the movie mm -hmm. and, you know, the movie theaters seem like they're almost not fully exiting, right? Because now they're coming up with like these boutique theaters and things mm -hmm. like that. And mm -hmm. obviously more people are consuming more at, at home, right? With streaming and things like that. What do you see what happening with these theaters? Do they just continue to keep getting more of these like boutiques or do you see them still trying to really push to make the movies for the theater, if that makes sense, versus being at home? I think there you have a pool, okay. right? Yep. So you, if you have a studio dominated system okay. where it's, hey, we own HBO Max, we can create our own content. Mm -hmm. Instead of giving to the theater and splitting profits, hey, you know, okay. now we have to share profits with AMC, with Regal, with Landmark, whoever. Yep. We can directly put our own platform and we have a, um, you know, a base on how much money we're going to make, how many viewers are going to watch it, sure. how much money this content generates based on, you know, our consumers, subscriptions, mm -hmm. and, and however their logarithms work. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, in that case, it's like we're not dependent on that system, right? Got it. But then, it's still a system that that you know you can generate so much revenue from you know mm -hmm. if done correctly so yeah. you know certain films it's like it just makes sense to put through the the theatrical system still in certain films it's like hey instead of taking that risk of having to put so much pna budget behind it mm -hmm. it's easier to say hey we're going to take a less risk and put it on these platforms yeah um if you're self-financing the film if you own the platform you know it can kind of make sense for yourself right but yeah. if you're not self-financing the film if you have real executive producers and, and private financers and private equity that kind of came in to create content, mm -hmm. you know, those guys want to get their money back and see, hopefully see a profit. So yeah. sometimes that system might not get them the biggest bang for their buck. So they need the theatrical system. They need, you know, each corridor of this film to kind of truly make the the max value of their film, what their film can get. So in that case, I hope the, the theater system goes nowhere. You know, if anything, I think it opens up more now for the independents opposed to just being strictly for the studios. That makes mm. sense. I kind of thought sense. it was going to be the opposite. Yeah, I thought it was yeah. going to be geared way more towards just big budget, huge avenues because. Yeah. Well, you can, but then people still consume content. Yeah. So I think at the end of the day, it's still about the consumer. So you're still going to want to take your wife to the movies, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You're still going to want to take your families out and get some popcorn. It's I mean, special. I love it. Yeah, yeah, it's special when you movies. go there. You There's know, nothing like um, going to a movie like that. Yeah. I went to the movies on a random, like on a Tuesday, you know, and I think Super Mario Brothers had just oh, yeah. came out. <laughs> and it was jam-packed full of the kids zoo, yeah. on a Tuesday, you know, yeah. weekday afternoon. Yeah. People took their kids out of school yeah. just to go watch Super and It was packed. Yeah. You can't emulate that anywhere else. No, you yeah, know, it's nowhere. a beautiful feeling. Yeah. And I think for that reason, theater should and need to stay in play, you know, yeah, and um, until we stop going to theaters and buying tickets, you know, 
films will continue going there. You know, yeah. that's that's how yeah. I look at it. The goal is just making sure you know how to make a profit from there because a lot of movies yeah. lose money in the theaters. Yeah, it's almost like they were like, the, everybody was trying to tell you theaters are going down. It's like everybody kept, you for years, like theaters are going out of business and then people seem, are, they're speaking up a little bit more like, no, we want it. We're going to show yeah. up. We want to keep yeah. these here because to your point, your point, like I personally enjoy and love going to the I theater. I love going the to the theater. The great, like yeah. the sound quality. I yeah. love the popcorn, but yeah. you, you need it around, I feel, at least for somebody like me with the family. So it makes sense. No, I think yeah. it's amazing. I think yeah. it's just, you know, we want to keep theater chains in, in afloat. You know, they've made mm -hmm. a, a good way of living and they make a good profit source. Um, but, you know, if you have everything kind of internally, you can create your own content, put mm -hmm. it on your own platform. You don't need that mm -hmm. system. It's like, you know, if I make a Netflix movie, yeah. you have your own Netflix platform. Why go to Regal and give them money? So when you don't yeah. need to, you know, you lose so it. I can understand that part mm -hmm. of it, you know, mm -hmm. and so. That's why certain films you you would hope would go to the theater, but mm -hmm. they'll never make it there. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that's just the way I guess the market is changing right now. Yeah, yeah it makes sense. It's exciting to see. I mean, obviously, you, you being a UNLV grad and, and building kind of starting here. What's your thoughts on, I know you worked with Mark Warburg in the past, what he's been able to do with trying to really get this Hollywood 2.0 in Vegas and get these mm -hmm. tax credits and things like that in the you know, state of Nevada. What's your thoughts on that? Just of what, what you think is going to happen here in Vegas? You know, I love Vegas. Vegas is, you know, yeah. um, home. Vegas has always been a tough film community, right? Because yeah. I think the extreme heats, it's hard mm -hmm. to shoot oh, out here, sense. right? Good it's like, point. you know, yeah. um, you know, I've been in so many several meetings with them trying to build studios out here. And, you know, it's it just tough, you know, because of the weather, because of the type of environment Vegas mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's beautiful facilities here. Yeah. It's just hard to shoot here, you know, Um and so I think if they increase incentives, they made it easier um, because we're a beautiful backdrop. We're a beautiful scenery. Everyone loves to come to Vegas. For they sure. make it very accessible to get here. I think if we made it more film friendly, more people would come do productions. I mean, because there's been some major productions here, mm -hmm. you know, especially on the strip. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, the strip can be very closed off. It's They're hard. Not, you know, yeah. it's, you know yeah. it's tough, you know, because yeah. they don't want to stop their monies necessarily for a production unless it makes sense or unless it's a super big production. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, you know, I'm hoping um, to see more productions take place here. And that's a goal of mine as well, to be able to, you know, yeah. facilitate so many productions here a year where we're getting a lot more Vegas talent. Mm -hmm. um, we're seeing, you know, Vegas businesses flourish through the film industry, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So that's the goal of mine as well. Yeah. And I'm seeing, I, I saw some of the partnerships, uh, I forgot the development company, but they're working with UNLV to br really bring in this um, Las Vegas media campus, right? Mm -hmm. So I was seeing that... Um, they're actually doing it, you know, V, you know, down the street from Durango. And then they're also looking at Summerlin, which would be pretty cool. That'd be nice. Hopefully a son, a Sony Pictures or somebody is going to be able to do it. But I hope it does because it seems like this next kind of runway for business over this next mm -hmm. 70 years, 10 years is like a gold mine as far as setting these foundations. Yeah. Um, but I saw, so you, you've kind of changed a little bit, right? So you've been in Beverly Hills for a while. And like we were talking on the phone, you'd opened up in Atlanta and also New York City, right? Mm -hmm. Am mm -hmm. I understanding? So what, what was the process of that, kind of the thought process of that? The Vegas Circle Podcast is brought to you by RAC Financial. They help new and established businesses with simple, secure, and reliable payment processing. RAC's credit card merchant processing services are unmatched. Visit racfinancial.com today and mention Vegas Circle Podcast. Expansion, you know, okay. building. Mm -hmm. Now that, you know, we're distributors, we work with quite a few different production companies as well, yeah. um, building out um, productions. Okay. And so because of select productions taking place in certain areas, we'll have offices there, you know, and we'll yep. set up shop there for eight months or a year or two years. Um, Atlanta has a big mecca for creating content. So we'll probably yeah. always have an office in Atlanta now. Yeah, you know? Chris and I just um, came back for it. It was yeah. awesome. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Um, New York is up and down, you know, depending on the time and, and what's going on. But. Um, it's really just based on, you know, us having productions and doing business in certain places. Mm -hmm. And so it's easier to have personnel there. We're hiring people there. You know, we have people working there consistently. So having an office there is convenient for us. Yeah. I was curious, just kind of like the whole process, right? Like I always heard, um, like, for example, Tyler Perry, right? Because obviously he's huge, right? Just doing stuff mm -hmm. with BT. How does it work where, let's say Chris and I have a script, right? We can't just come and try to pitch it to you real quick like you know how people give you the mixtape or whatever it is yeah how, how does that work because i heard him say it and he said it so eloquently i want to i want our listeners to understand yeah. what really goes on. you can't just go on the street and say hey jeff we got this movie chris and i got this movie we want to be able to do here's our idea because people sue so much so what yeah, what is yeah. that like, kind of walk us through that process of what that what that works like from script to fruition um yep. you know it's a tough process yeah mm -hmm. what i will say is this um 
content is key, right? So yeah. we all need content. We're always looking for that next great, you know, film and idea mm -hmm. and story. Mm -hmm. It starts in your mind. It mm -hmm. brews in, it's in someone's head, that next big avatar, that next big home alone, you name it is in mm -hmm. someone's head right now, you know? Sure. And they may not know how to convey it correctly, or they might not know how to turn it into a screenplay. So mm -hmm. sometimes that pitch can mean so much. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's A, from creating that idea, Mm -hmm. And then building it from that point, you know, you might not know how to create a screenplay, but you know, someone else you talk to might, but so you need to kind of convey that and then keep it pushing. You know, now it gets tough when you're dealing with, you know, the Tyler Perry levels because they're getting scripts from all over the world. They're getting scripts left and right. They every sue, freaking and they all, everybody wants yeah. to sue them all the time. Yeah. And yeah. so, you know, networks, they're getting scripts daily, you know, and how it works now with technology is, you know, um, once you submit a script, it's already automatically in their system. So, you know, it's, you know, there's another script that's similar. The system automatically kind of pulls it out and says, hey, these scripts are alike or it's the same exact mm -hmm. screenplay now. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a good thing with, with technology. But, mm -hmm. you know, it's really just, A, taking your idea, getting into a screenplay, getting the whole production around in regards of creating what the production will look like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and getting the right personnel kind of in play to um, get to that stage. So production shoot outline, of course, the money is the most important, you know, getting mm -hmm. money there as well. So finding executive producers, someone mm -hmm. that can actually back your idea, mm -hmm. but then you need to know how much it's going to cost to shoot it. So you need a line producer to That's break your hard, script down yeah. to, to understand how much it's going to actually cost the budget locations, yeah. figure that part out. Once you understand your locations, you understand a budget, then you go get the monies mm -hmm. and then you go get the personnel, you know, or simultaneously same time you go get your, you know, your Mark Wahlberg's and your directors, your Tyler Perry's and, um, and your financing simultaneously and then you execute, Yeah, yeah. you know? So it's not a, um, uh, you know, one set way. It's kind of like, Hey, however you can get those processes done. A lot of layers. Yep. Do it. Yeah. And how is it for somebody trying to break in? Do you think it is almost to a point now because there is so many moving pieces and so much connection based, you know, steps through the process that it really you have to be in that environment consistently? Or is it me with zero experience? I think I have a great idea and I start running with it. Like, is there still that is it a super hard barrier of entry to get into that? Or do you need to be involved in it consistently? I think that's with any business. I think any business has a barrier of entry, especially if you don't have the resources necessarily. Mm -hmm. But just putting it out there and going forward with it. So from the idea, talking to people that might know something and yeah. then just keep it going. Mm -hmm. You know, if you know one person that might know something or cold calling, mm -hmm. um, you can blanket send a hundred, a thousand plus emails. Yeah. Someone's going to pay attention. Yeah. You know, you're going to get better at creating that email, you know, learning, you know, hey, I said this word wrong. This is the way of wrong yeah. way of pitching it. <laughs> and then, I mean, you'll see people go to different film festivals and film markets and you see them consistently pitching the same screenplay. Oh, that's interesting. You know, I don't, it, it you know. Suggest, you know, you're pitching the same script for the last, next 10 years, you know, something like <laughs> yeah, that. Cause yeah. it's like, hey, get another one, yeah. you know, but <laughs> yep. um, you'll see it, you know, people are there and and, and you'll recognize those people because you'll see mm. them consistently going from person to person, pitching, trying to create ideas, building relationships. I mean, I think one thing I will give filmmakers, there's some of the most aggressive people sometimes, you know, <laughs> like it's saying, like, yeah, buddy, yeah. they're going to film somewhere. They're going to go to the great depths to get a yeah. shot, to get, you know, to, to get a story. It's, you know, it's an amazing, amazing field, I think, sometimes just in the big in the regards of um, there's no exact set rules. Yeah. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. kind of interesting. Like, you know, we've all vision, seen the movie yeah. about how people have gone through the process and it's Man. pretty consistent in aggressiveness yeah. to, regarding the people that make it. There's always such great stories when it actually works. And that's why I think we're big. Uh, I've, heard, I've heard like, you know, certain people put, you know, go to the extreme. Um, yeah, I can't even imagine. I think Dion said something in the video is like, hey, you got to die once, you know, and, and, <laughs> and then be willing to go die again. And it's like, yeah, I don't know if it's that serious, but yeah, <laughs> but yeah, you got to really, you got to really go out there and you have yeah. to um, put it all on the line sometimes, yeah. you know, because it's not easy. Yeah. Does it scare you with all this, this AI chat GPT and all this stuff where people could write the full scripts in, versus the organic? You no, know, I think it's exciting. Yeah. yeah. I think it's exciting. I mean, okay. if, if AI can create a better idea than people can, you know, and it's mm -hmm. going to be a new and in innovative film that's, you know, yeah. that's going to impress everyone, then we'll see, you know, yeah. I don't know how, you know, the extent of what AI is going to do screenplay wise, because sure. it's just ideas coming from man himself, you know, so to speak. So I don't think it's scary. I mean, to a screenwriter, of course, yeah. if I'm writing screenplays all day, I'm, I'm of course, I'm a bit worried of, you know, uh, a technology taking my place. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, but I don't know if it's going to get to that extreme because I think, you know, we create these ideas and they come from us. Yeah. So, you know. It's still the human element. And, then, and the human, human element of the work yeah. necessary of pulling it off. I mean, of course, if AI can 
present a script to someone that has the budget that can be made, then of course all good to it. But mm -hmm. outside of that, I don't, I wouldn't be too threatened by yeah. it. Yeah, it's going to be interesting when you start getting to a point where you just kick an idea into a computer system, it automatically raises the screenplay, uses the likeness of an actor, and pops right. out a finalized video. That's going to be a very that's weird a bit dynamic. scary. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, a bit scary. that's what I'm seeing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Able to do all of that, and, and I know there have to be some kind of laws or something put in place from plagiarism mm -hmm. to yeah. you know using someone's likeness, etc. But so I think Bruce Willis just sold his likeness to do an app. Really? Because he stopped acting now. So I did just read he sold his likeness to be used AI generated in a video and for video ad. I, don't, I haven't seen the crap. ad yet, but it just it's supposed to be coming out soon. Yeah. For Bruce Willis? Bruce Willis, yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's interesting. You know, he retired. So he's, you know, I think he sold his likeness to be put into an ad that was AI generated content. <laughs> Honestly, I, I've, mm -hmm. I've always been one of those that um, I and I learned a long time ago, like you have to accept technology, you mm -hmm. know, I mean, I think even when we were coming into, you know, the whole MySpace days and, yeah. and things yeah. were changing, it's like, yeah. hey, we don't want to do that. And then you had was to. going to Facebook, it's like, I'm not going to go to Facebook, <laughs> I just got MySpace, you know, yeah. cool. That's but true. Yeah. I think you have to adapt and I think mm -hmm. you have to, because um, it's not going anywhere. It's, yep. If anything, it's going to get stronger and get better. Mm -hmm. And so I think as people, especially as entrepreneurs or businessmen, you have mm -hmm. to learn it and accept it and adapt to it and, and incorporate it within your own business plan. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, and I th that way you see success from it. Yeah. What's happening with the writers right now? So everybody's on strike currently to date? Or are we close to I'm hoping agreement? it should be over, man. I mean, okay. it's been a lot going on with the strikes. I know, I know SAG, they've been threatening yeah. stuff. Yeah. Um, I just hope they come to a resolution. I want people back working. I want to see people back happy and, 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 and feeding their families. I know mm -hmm. strike is never good for the yeah. creatives. No, um, not at all. Yeah. You know, um, just living in LA, so many people are out of work right now. And I hate to see that. What's and the so, issue? Is it because of streaming? That, is that why? I don't because know. I don't like the particulars, weren't... you know, right okay. now off the top mm -hmm. of my head in regards of some of the things they're fighting for. Um, okay. Yeah, I know there's a few things, but I don't know. So a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah, a lot of, yeah, a lot of stuff. Anything, players, but... but I know they're fighting for some stuff that's important for them. Okay. I know um, some of the AI stuff was one of the uh, one of the things they were fighting with as yeah. well. But, you know, my thing is, is I just hope that people get back to work. Yeah, I'm with you. I I'm with strikes. you. I hope they get what they need. Keep them back working. Yeah. It's yeah. too much. Yeah, it's too many special people out there, man. Great minds. So amazing people yeah. just out of work right now, and I hate to see that. I mean, people I always say, "Hey, it's, it's a good time now. We can put our scripts in, and networks yeah, are yeah. taking more content." I just want to see people working and happy. I agree. I agree. What's Porter Craig working on right now, man? Is there something you can give us that uh, that's in the mix for for twenty twenty three? Everything, man. Right now, okay. we're looking to scale. So, okay. um, we have two theatrical productions um, okay. uh, geared up to hit the theaters. One later this summer. Um, one early next year. You okay. know, we're looking to going out wide, fifteen hundred, two thousand plus screens theatrically nice. across the yep. across the states. Um, we're putting out a lot more exciting content. We're building our relationships internationally, so we're looking to theatrically certain content in Europe and South Africa and Australia and a few other, uh, a few other foreign territories. Up. So, okay. just building our content, building our brand, um, expanding some of our filmmakers that we've been working with. We have some extremely talented production um, mm -hmm. companies and people that we've um, partnered with and writers and directors that we're just looking to expand on, get them more work, get them more projects. Mm -hmm. um, we're going back into acquisitions mode, so we're going to be signing more content here soon again because we kind of stopped that for a while so we can kind of make sure we do right with the content we had. But no, just just expanding, building, put more content out into the marketplace, mm -hmm. put more um, films into the theaters for, for people to come check it out that way. But yeah. That's pretty much it right now. You, you know, just came back from France too, and you took my call when you were in France out there doing. What, what was that um, whole vibe like? What did, what did you learn from from going to a huge festival like that in France? Well, Cannes was exciting this year because yeah. um, last year was the first year back after COVID, but it yeah. still wasn't as big of a turnout. Mm -hmm. as okay. you understand? So people okay. were still, you know, this year it felt like everyone was there. You know, yeah. it felt like everyone's happy, and 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 every company, every person was a con this year, you know? So it was exciting That's being awesome. able to have um, so many meetings directly with so many, you know, um, executives from different territories that, you know, you might talk to or you might mm -hmm. email, but you never get to see. Mm -hmm. So that that face-to-face, -face, you know, shaking hands and, 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 and that building relationships is so strong, yeah. you know, especially with our international building right now. So no, con was exciting, man, beautiful place. I mean, what better way to do um, business, but you know, right there on the, yeah, on the water. And, yeah, yeah, I was looking so. at your pictures, man. I was getting jealous, man. Yeah, invite That's, us yeah, next time. Just, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah we start no, doing no, that. It's exciting, yeah. it's exciting. And then um, we got a uh, chance to do uh, speak to some the college kids out there as well. Awesome. So we were able to educate them on the market because, <clears throat> excuse me, um, Khan is a huge market, mm -hmm. um, and it's a film festival. Mm -hmm. So people 
go there, but they don't understand how to really navigate con. It's just exciting. You, have, big, you have the yeah, actors, yeah. you have yeah. actresses there, you yeah. have celebrities, you have paparazzi, you have the the beautiful uh, outfits. It's just, it's it's a lot going on at con. Yeah. So, you know, and they don't educate a lot of the kids and people going there on how to really navigate or the best way to, to um, take advantage of the marketplace. So we sat down with... Um, with a group of college students and and, and really just kind of expanded and exposed how to take advantage of the market, you know, how to get to the screenings, you know, how to best build their career, get what they're looking for at the marketplace. So, mm-hmm. cause you know, it can be kind of scary, you know, yeah. you don't know what to do and mm-hmm. so much happening and going on. You don't know where you yeah. fit in. It's at. overwhelming. Yeah. It's overwhelming it can be, in a way. It can yeah. be in yeah. a way, but if you understand yeah. what's happening, mm-hmm. you know where to move and where to go and who to talk to and who not to talk to. Um, yeah. Cause it can be, I mean, everyone's there for a film, mm-hmm. you know, so, you know what? Where else do you get a place where there's thousands of people there, all for the, you know similar goal? Same setup. Mm-hmm. That's exciting, man. That's exciting. Yeah. Um, for business advice, man, we always ask you know all of our guests, um, you know, business advice or nuggets. What would you share for somebody or, or a listener that um, maybe wants to get in business for themselves, or maybe they want to get in the film industry for themselves? What, what would you say to them? Well, I guess it's two different things, right? Yeah. Um, business itself, I think business can be fun. I think okay. business is uh, is built on consistency. I think business is built on building great relationships. If you're, okay. you're you have weaknesses somewhere, you work with someone that has strengths where you're weak at. You know, mm-hmm. you can do a lot by yourself, but it's better if you work with other people to go further. You know, I've definitely learned that. Um, it's a lot of money out there for everyone. You know, yeah. but I think the biggest thing and the best thing for me was getting something done every day. You know, every single day, because you're yeah. not going to. Um, you know, they always use that saying, you're not, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day, mm-hmm. you know? So, you know, there are certain days you get a lot done. There are certain days you don't get much done, but as long as you get something done every single day, I agree. Um, you know, you'll see yourself six months in a whole different place than you were six months prior. Mm-hmm. And that process you have to fall in love with mm-hmm. because it's a tough process. It's a, it's a, you know, um, in the beginning, I think in business, you always see the end goal and you see, Hey, I want this, I want this big picture. And you don't understand sometimes how many steps it takes to get to that big picture. And when you in business for a year, two years, and you don't get to that big picture, a lot of people give up, as you can understand. Yeah. Um, just because it's like it feels like it's unattainable. But you just push every day, six months, you'll see that picture becoming a little bit smaller and easier to yeah. to acquire. And, and then that picture actually might be too small because your picture might even be bigger now. <laughs> Way bigger, bigger. Now two bigger years campus. in, like, yeah. hey, well, I could do this. You mm-hmm. know, why was my goal that way? Um, yeah. And then in regards to film. Film is a team sport, you know, um, and so film, I believe, depending on where you're coming in film, you have to build the right team of people around or work with the right team. Mm-hmm. You know, I've never, <clears throat> at least I don't know one person has had a successful project where they did everything by themselves. I mean, now there might be something out there, but you don't see at all. Really it's impossible. Yeah. yeah, sometimes. Yeah, so yeah. in that case, you build your team. You have to network, you have to get with people. If you don't, you know, you're shy, get with someone that's not shy, you know, and then figure out and then know your business, you know, work out agreements. Um, Cause in the day, you know, that's what everything's gonna go off of, a contract and agreement. So make sure you understand that mm-hmm. and just build your resources. You don't have to have necessary money always to kind of build a company. Mm-hmm. You gotta have the work ethic and the know-how, you know, and then you can get to the money eventually. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you've proven that, man. You've been putting in a lot of work, man. I've been yeah, yeah. for this whole, whole this whole time since yeah. I'm, I'm since I've known you. You've been putting yeah. a lot of work, man. So I yeah. applaud what you're doing, man. Keep, keep supporting what you're doing. Thank you, thank um, you, thank you. Just gotta ask. We always ask our guests because I know you being in Vegas, you pop here all the time, man. Give us a, give us a gem Fav- favorite restaurant in Vegas. Oh. What would that be? And you guys know every restaurant I out I here. Yes. I, want, I want a gym. I want a gym. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Honestly, I think you probably tell me. The- yeah. Um, what do I like? I like a lot of places out yeah. here, man. It just depends on the, the depends uh, on the night, probably for you. Yeah. The night or yeah. the type of food I want, yeah. you know. Um honestly, I don't go to a lot of casinos consistently for, yeah. for food because yeah. I kind of stay off the strip when I yeah. come here. Mm-hmm. There's a few restaurants I like. Um for Italian, I like Vintner's Grill. Pretty oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Vintner's Grill's good. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. About Charleston. Them. yeah. yeah so I like good. them. I mean that's like a little hidden gem because in the business business offices, you don't even know yeah. they're there. I had yeah. a good yep. experience at another Italian place called my mother's kitchen. I'm about this kitchen. I don't know. And they had like I... live entertainment. Uh, okay. They cooked the food right there in front of you. The I got to look that up. I all, heard the ta- that. Uh, all the people. He okay. walks around him and his wife. Okay. You got to make reservations because there's usually, you know, sold out. So That's you have, what's up. Okay. Book it two weeks in advance sometimes. I think oh, okay. on there, but I ain't heard that one before. Um, I think okay. they open like 5 p.m. between like 5 and 10. Okay. Um, awesome. But. Great Italian spot, man. I like it. Okay, so two spots, man. Vintage Grill and my mother's kitchen, man. So again, man, we're going to continue to keep rooting for you, man. 
awesome what you're doing, especially with this new partnership. And uh, we applaud you, man. So thank you, man. Thanks for yeah, joining us. I appreciate what you guys do, yeah. man. Awesome, I love man. what you guys are doing in regards of um, bringing business, you know, creating the awareness of business owners. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. um, usually you don't got the glamour. You know, it's like we're the ones, you know, getting our hands dirty and, yeah. and, and building and um, the name, the brand itself sees whatever success. And Thank you, um, man. Yeah. So I appreciate you guys actually, you know, giving the business owners a platform to kind of speak and mm -hmm. to educate people looking to kind of be in similar fields. Because it doesn't yeah. matter, honestly, I think what field you're in, business is business. Yeah. The steps yeah, are still yeah, the yeah. steps. You know, yeah. you need a business plan. You need execution. You need work ethic. You need people. You need, you know, um, a plan necessarily, yeah. no matter what industry you're in. So I think you, by putting so many different people in different industries, you kind of show that. Thank you, man. Yeah, you know, we appreciate that. That's that's a strong statement from you, especially because we started with you. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's that's the, that's the truth. And I mean, honestly, that's what just to piggyback off what you're saying. I mean, that's why Chris and I started this is because, yeah. like we we spoke on the phone about this multiple times, is the strip sucks up all of that, and the business owners don't get their say a lot of times. Yeah, yeah. it's and an intimidating for people to try to take it yeah. and grow from yeah. there. And I think giving yeah. people an opportunity to learn is important. Yeah. Yeah. And Vegas has some big businesses, man. I mean, 1,000%. We've been showcasing them. Generating yeah. seven, eight figures a year, yes. you know, and yeah. people have no clue who they are and what they are. And you would never yeah. know that, you know, certain restaurants can generate that kind of revenue yeah, out here. For and sure. Certain small businesses can generate good revenue yeah. that you don't see everywhere else. So 100%. No, love it. Yeah. Well, we're going to keep winning it. together, man. Like Let's I told you before, man. Keep winning together, man. We'll keep bringing you back, man, just to update us. So, I love it. Next uh, time, I'd love to have my partner here. Great guy. 1,000%. I'd love to meet him. As soon as I can get him, you know, he's, yeah. a, he's a bit more bougie than I am. Yeah. You, know, you got to fly him first yeah. class. You know, you got to. That's what's up. Yeah. Get the we had his client on. You know? we, we talked about it online. We had years ago, we had one of his artists on. So, yeah, 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 Marie, yeah. So, yeah, I remember that. But, but shout out to Craig, man. Good dude, man. I haven't met him, but we've we talked online a couple times. But shout out to him. And I love to meet him in person. So, Appreciate you. Keep winning, man. Thank you, brother. No, yeah. You guys as well. Thanks a lot. Yeah. That's good stuff. It.